Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today we've got the pleasure of watching a YouTuber, Rohar, whose real name is Roman, playing in their Udes 1516. Now, Rohar produces videos inside the Ukrainian language, so if you want to go and check him out, then I'll be putting that in the description down below. Now, Roha is going to show you some incredible Udes 1516 gameplay, getting an all-time damage record in one of the most brutal tanks inside the game. The Udes 1516 is amongst the best of the tier 10 medium tanks because it has statistics in all of the right areas to do so many different things inside the game. Firstly, it has the fifth best camo on any medium tank in World of Tanks. It's barely behind a Borask within that regard. And so if you want to, you can play the Udes 1516 really sneaky. I love whacking an exhaust, vision system, vents, coated optics, that kind of thing on the Udes. And then you can pretty much be a light tank for your team. However, on the other hand, you can play like Rohar here, have an awesome damage setup with vents, gun rammer, and vertical stabilizers. That is the all-round firepower output. And then you suddenly get to make use of the tank's monster 2,800 damage per minute and 440 alpha damage, which allows you to out-trade even dangerous heavy tanks like the fe 215 b Now, Roha is showing their great map knowledge here by rushing into a position that I love to contest. If you can get into this scenario with a tank with good gun depression, then you can just absolutely mince the heavy tanks on the enemy team. Now, the Udes has a great turret, 13 degrees of gun depression, so it's the perfect tool for this part of the map. However, if you were to spawn on the other side, then you could still easily just look into this area here and do the same thing to the other heavies. It is a little bit dangerous to do if you can't go, I'd say, minimum 40 kilometers an hour, because you can see that even though Rohar's top speed limit is 50 without the field mods on this tank, then he nearly got caught crossing that position. So be very careful. It's a risky position to push unless you can go 50 kilometers an hour. And then still also make sure you've got the firepower to be able to back it up. Don't do this in a tank that has poor damage per minute because quite often a vehicle will try and position themselves to the center of the map or alternatively just push you and then you're not doing too well. Look at this damage. Six thousand damage in the first two and a half minutes of this battle just absolutely unbelievable stuff but unfortunately roman takes a hit there from the object 780 and then suddenly you know you might have incredible firepower but your hull armor and your hit points are just not quite enough on this vehicle to weather a storm against some very dangerous vehicles talk about dangerous vehicles there's probably no more dangerous vehicle in world of tanks than the yak panzer 100 420 millimeters of high explosive anti-tank penetration will turn even the best of turrets like on the udes 1516 into swiss cheese however luckily roman has a faithful is7 there who doesn't have any field mods on their vehicle so new is7 player even though they've got a mark so maybe they just don't believe in having field mods or an old school player coming back to world of tanks possibly who has distracted the Jaeger who taken the shot, which allows Roman to be able to make their way, finish off the Jagdpanzer, and put some punishment into the uh, 780. Now, interestingly, Roman decides to not finish off the 780, I guess expecting that the Super Conqueror was going to finish them off, and instead decides to turn their attention to the IS-7. Unfortunately, a pesky griller at the back of the map, and what is more quintessential in World of Tanks than having a griller at the back of the map on Muravanka? put 754 damage in. Now meaning that even though Roha has done 8,500 damage in four minutes, what is this game? That they are now a one shot and they are going to have to be careful. I love to see that intuition on the Udes, beautiful stuff. Although I do think that squeezing intuition on this tank can be quite tricky because as far as I can remember, it has two loaders and only three crew members. But actually, am I speaking on my backside? I have to alt-tab to just check this. No, it does have two loaders. Three crew members, a commander and a gunner are both loaders on this vehicle. And so investing two crew skills on your Udes can be a tall ask uh, when you've only got a small amount of crew that have high-pressured roles. However, Rohar's decided that it's worth it. And I agree with them. I love intuition on all of my vehicles. Being able to switch out between AP and heat can give you what you need depending on whatever you're shooting at or even possibly an HE reload here 
No, I think it would be greedy to reload the HE in that situation. And it looks like Rohar probably hit a blind shot on the gorilla there, who was last spotted on half hit points. Now, if they hit the blind shot, they're going to be up to about... 9,800 damage in five minutes. Oh my lord, chill out, bro. You're surpassing most of our damage records very quickly in just five minutes, the first third of this battle. However, now Rohar is surrounded by a graveyard of his own teammates who have failed to be able to make the push against the Batshat and the Gorilla, and to all intents and purposes, maybe one of the other tank destroyers that has managed to slinky back. Look at that platoon of Object 268 version 4s on the enemy team as well. We can see that they are level 350, so they are seasoned gamers. Seasoned YOLO gamers, I think would be the case in the, in the form of the Object 268 version 4. So, Roha now has to be careful, but luckily the Udez does have the camo, but it doesn't matter how good your camo is. If there's a batch out opposite you, 300 meters away inside a bush, they're still probably going to see Roha because they're not packing the exhaust build on this vehicle. It's really crazy what this thing can get up to with regards to its camo. I'm pretty sure you could achieve 40 if not more percent camo while moving on this tank if you do use a funky build. And it looks like Roha has actually possibly lowered the uh, the view range of this vehicle um, to be able to increase the top speed. Because if with the eagle eyed of view, and obviously I still don't need to go to spec savers yet, uh, you can see that they're not quite reaching the 445 meters view distance where it would join up with the the maximum spotting distance ring on your map. So it looks like they have uh, elected possibly to lower the view range on this vehicle or maybe they're just not prioritizing situational awareness and recon on their commander probably because they're uh, wanting to invest into intuition which you know different play styles for different players and talk about different play styles oh my word here's an object 268 version 4 on full hit points but that 268 version 4 is not using a durability device so if rohar is able to hit the tracks the front wheel especially of the 268 version 4 they could lock them in place and absolutely farm them that's definitely one of the tanks that i would consider taking a durability device on purely because as soon as you're double tracked in that vehicle then all of its strength which is playing like a bit of a, a goon of the battlefield, will be lost. All right, so Rohar, now the other 268 version 4, also on full hit points, also appears locked in combat, however, with the BZ-75. Now, Rohar's got to be careful here about two players stuck in a Soviet sandwich, and we can see that the other 268 version 4 is definitely using a durability device on that vehicle, which means that Rohar will be tricky to be able to stop it. I like the, the swing at the top of the weak point there, but Rohar's got to be careful. They only have eight rounds that are not high explosive left on their vehicle. Oh my word! What was that? Rohar narrowly avoids death against the 268 version 4. Manages to track them. They got rammed for 200, leaving them on 37 hit points, but we can see that that has managed to allow Rohar to get Adrenaline Rush active. Now the 268 version 4 is very much regretting their life choices. They don't have a durability device on that vehicle, but interestingly enough, even without a durability device, it looks like that player has an exceptionally good crew and maybe even a large repair kit as they were able to get the tracks back on quickly. Maybe even somebody who uses bounty protection technology on that vehicle. That was such a quick repair time. Oh my word, that was a clutch shot. Rohar hitting the weak point of the Object 268 version 4. The benefit of vert stabs coming in there and just like that they are now up to 11,700 damage that we have seen and possibly even more considering that they blind fired the gorilla earlier. This is just wonderful World of Tanks stuff. Roha went on a flank, played aggressively, pumped out the kind of damage that usually wins a battle in the first two or three minutes of the game, then made a push with their allies, played perfectly aggressively, just wonderful World of Tanks gameplay, watched all of their team die, held on against a full health, Object 268 version 4 was stuck in a sandwich, but luckily the BZ-75 also managed to pull their weight in the center of the map, and suddenly Roha has completely changed a game into their favor. They've pretty much done half of the damage of the entire enemy team. And there's the Gorilla, who is on low hit points. Roha unable to be able to finish them off, and now they've got one APCR round, two heat, and two HE left. And this is a very dangerous Udes right now. Gun rammer, bounty gun rammer, bounty vents, uh, rammer directive, adrenaline rush. This is this is like 4,000, over 4,000 damage per minute that Rohar is going to be pumping out right now. 
and that is a full health hoary. So how many of these remaining shells can Roha managed to get in. Well, there's the first. That's 12,000 minus probably the 400 that we saw blind fire earlier. But now with only one heat round and one AP round, will Roha even have the damage to be able to deal with the Hori at the end of the game? Remember, this is one of, if not the most dangerous tier 10 tank destroyers, although it doesn't look like their aim is that good. As they whiff the shell, Roha gets lucky that the heat round goes in to the superstructure there, as that superstructure is actually 300 millimeters of armor, so they're lucky that they managed to pen it. And oh dear, they whiffed! They whiffed the AP round, unable to be able to get one through the uh, side of the vehicle. But luckily, they managed to penetrate an HE shell. Oh my word, that was some serious fortunate penetration rolls at the end of the game, adding 500 damage to what we saw. 13,000 damage that we have seen inside World of Tanks. And did Roha manage to hit that blind shot earlier? Well, they actually didn't. That shell didn't manage to hit the Griller. The damage that was seen was the damage that was dealt. Nevertheless, this was the highest damage anyone has ever done in the UDES 1516 and uploaded it to the What Replays website. So Roha doesn't get as many Battle Hero medals as you would expect, right? A Confederate medal and a high caliber. And boy, was this the Confederate medal of Confederate medals. They damaged eight vehicles on the enemy team that was subsequently killed by their allies. And can you believe 13,000 damage dealt and only two kills in this game? What did the enemies have? 6,500 hit points of tank? Well, you know that's not how it works. And maybe if Rohar is trying to push marks of excellence on this tank, then they would have decided to shoot the higher health vehicles rather than finishing off the low health tanks as we saw with the Object 780. So this was the UDES game to end all UDES games. It was the perfect example of why this tank is great. It's kind of the best hull down medium in the game, although you've got to watch out for that upper hull armor. And then when you get going with that gun, what it lacks in finesse with shell velocity and raw penetration on its gold rounds, if you've got great skills like Roha, you can more than make up for it. So Roha, congratulations to you on the highest damage game in the UDES 1516 that's ever been uploaded on the What Replays website, and thank you so much for sharing your replay for all of the community to enjoy. I knew as soon as I saw your game that I wanted to commentate on it, and I hope you felt like I did a good job on your epic gameplay. If all of you out there loved this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And as I mentioned, if you want to go and check out Roha and their awesome World of Tanks gameplay presented in the Ukrainian language, then I'll put a link in the description down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.